Christmas has come and gone, and more videos are being pumped out, starting with this one. Today we're going to talk about partnerships, yay or nay. Welcome. Not everyone is bad, and not everyone wants to take advantage of you. But the problem is, most people are bad, and most people want to take advantage of you especially in the car business, and I'm going to tell you why. For a partnership to work out, y'all both have to dig the ditches. Y'all both have to be on the same level. Y'all both have to contribute the same. Y'all both have to have the same mindset and skills. You must understand that finding a partner is like finding Bigfoot. It's not going to happen that easy, or if it even will happen at all. You see, one partner is going to wind up staying at the dealership more than the other. Another partner is going to wind up doing something more than the other partner. And then that's when hostility kicks in and the partnership goes downhill from there. There's two reasons you need a partner. The first reason, you're lacking the knowledge to go into this business. Or you're lacking the money the second reason is your business is growing you already have a successful business your business is growing and you want to take that business to the next level and you just can't do it by yourself just too many things to do you want to have that camaraderie that high five that yeah man and you want them to be dedicated and you feel in your head the only way to make them dedicated is to bring them on as a partner and that is fine and dandy but what you got to understand is you got to make them pay to be your partner you uh, you have already got a successful business so you have got to make them pay to to uh, do their part like they don't want to go in the ditches with you because they can because you've already been there you already built up that business so what do they got to do they got to put in some money now that comes with new problems because let's say they put in money and the business is going good for a while and then it tanks something like covid or a lawsuit and then it tanks oh god now you are the worst guy possible on earth they didn't go or they wasn't there in the ditches with you when you was having a hard time building it up and now they went from good to bad oh my god that is a whole nother shitload of problems now a good businessman a good partner would understand what happens a bad partner that was just in it for the money will not understand and will never understand and you cannot make them understand they just know that oh my god the business was going good and now it's bad you lied to me you're this and that to avoid all that just don't get a damn partner and the jealousy folks there is always jealousy from partners like that from from experienced partners from there are such things as good partners that knows the business and knows the ups and downs uh, but um, I'm talking about the ones and these are 99% of them the ones that don't understand the ones that gets jealous because you're driving a nicer car than them you're making more money than them you find cheaper deals than them it, it, it is always going to be something and a bunch of hostility is going to be built up and built up and built up and then one day it's going to absolutely explode. I don't just talk about this stuff and pull it out of my ass. I've been through this. I've been through it several times and trust me, I know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to let you in on a story that pertains to what we're talking about today partnerships and as everyone knows that uh, I helped Mike Feinberg start up the Fighting Lobster 
I made that so successful within two months he was banking thirty thousand dollars profit per month and then he died of COVID-19 at 34 years old so they kind of broke me when Mike died and in several different ways and I, I went to New York City I went to Las Vegas I went back to Florida and while I was traveling, uh, this guy was wanting to meet me at the places that I was traveling to and talk about business. And I'm like, okay, I, I didn't meet him in New York. I didn't meet him in, in, in Vegas. But uh, when I got back down to Florida, uh, he came down and I agreed to meet with this guy. So my only friend that I had just died. And this guy comes in and he says all the right things. And uh, he explains to me that he just got out of uh, a partnership or someone just screwed him over. And and he made me feel like, oh, okay, this, this guy's the same as me and this and that. And he uh, said he wanted to open a business and then he wanted to live in the Philippines and run it from there and this and that. and. I'm like, okay, well, uh, let's let's see what he has to say. And then one thing led to another. And then he basically agreed to move down and start up a business together. My word to me is very important. And I gave this guy my word that I will start up the car business with him and we'll make it successful and then we will move on to other things like motor homes in mexico and stuff and then you know he kept pushing me about the motor homes in mexico and stuff so i said I, i'm going to charge you for that i'm, I'm going to charge you for the motor homes charge you for mexico and you know that's when our first problem arose uh he didn't want to pay for nothing he just thought I should give him everything and then the wheels kept turning in my head and I found out that he wanted to use me I was stupid I was desperate and I wanted to make stuff work and I was looking past very very important things and I just kept on moving forward. And then we got phones for the business. We got a car for the business. It just kept moving forward. And, and in my mind, I knew that it was no good. We were days away from opening. And I gave my word. And someone sent me down. It says, Rick you're screwing up again you're screwing up again listen to what this guy says red flag he wants to open up a car dealership and live in the Philippines red flag he cannot think for himself he has no experience whatsoever in the used car business. He's in love with this girl in the Philippines that got kicked off a site for doing scams on Western men. And she did the same scam to him, but he's still with her. What the hell? Plus a lot of other red flags just kept popping up and popping up and I basically came to my senses. And so I set up a meeting and in that meeting, I told him that at, in this new car lot, he's going to do his thing and I'm going to do my thing. And he's going to buy his own cars. I'm going to buy my own cars and we just use the lot and just both run out of that license. And he didn't like that at all. And everything was confirmed then that all he wanted to do was use me and I wasn't going to let that happen so folks if you do decide to get a partner read between the lines and understand other people because there's a lot of people that they're consumers and they try their damnedest to be a producer but 
eventually the consumer just pours out of them because you really can't pretend to be a producer. So let me leave you with my final thoughts. At the end of the day, if you think you need a partner, then you're not ready to open up a business. If you need a partner, there's too many things that can go wrong and a new business, it's already stressful. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. You don't need to add this and trust me, partnerships are nothing but problems.